name is Brett Thelman. I'm the author of a new book on St. Clair titled St. Clair of Assisi, Light from the Cloister. I'm standing here in my absolutely favorite place in Assisi. This is the little road that goes from the old part of Assisi up there on the hill down to a little church and sanctuary called San Damiano. This is where St. Clair lived for about 40 years after her conversion when she decided to follow Francis. Now we know from the sources that Clair was from a noble family. She was born in the upper part of Assisi where the nobility lived. Her father was a knight, her uncles were knights, her cousins were knights. But when Clair was 18, she decided that she didn't want that life. Instead, she wanted to follow St. Francis who had already given up all of his worldly goods and he was wealthy too as a middle class merchant. And he was already living down here in the valley behind me to my right serving lepers, living in huts, and living a penitential life. Claire decided she want, wanted that life too. So the sources tell us that on the night of Palm Sunday, the year was 1212, she left in the middle of the night and went down here in the valley to St. Mary of the Angels, accompanied by a companion. St. Francis met her down there. He shaved her head, that was the tonsure. That designated her as a religious woman. They promptly took her to a Benedictine monastery for women called San Paolo de la Badese towards Bastia, which is over in this direction, and uh, they basically waited for her father to come and her uncles to come. When the relatives did come, all she had to do was take off the veil, show that she had a shaved head, that was the tonsor, she was consecrated. There was a uh, papal protection in that particular monastery that if you took a woman, a uh, consecrated woman by force out of the monastery, you could be excommunicated. So the family members left and Claire was safe in religious life. So the sources say that uh, after a short period of time, maybe a week or two weeks, the uh, friars accompanied Claire from San Paolo to a place up here on Mount Subasio, back here you can't really see it, uh, to a little place called Sant'Angelo in Panzo. And we're not sure too much about this community. It was either a, another Benedictine monastery for women or perhaps it was sort of a beganage where a community of women were living together, not necessarily under a rule, but maybe serving uh, poor people nearby. We don't know too much about it, but we do know that her sister, Agnes, joined her there, and Francis gave her the tonsure there as well. So after a short period of time, the sources actually say it was 16 days after her conversion, Francis led Claire and Agnes down here to San Damiano. And they walked along this very same path that we are right here. Uh, this was an old road that went from the sanctuary up into Assisi. We know that because there's a funerary monument, an old Roman funerary monument at the top of the hill. The Romans built their uh, their um, sepultures next to roads so that people coming in and out would see them. There's also a chapel dedicated to uh, uh, one of the patron saints of Foligno, which is nearby up there as well. So Francis accompanied her down here and Claire moved in, if you will, to a little church we're about to go see in just a moment. And she lived there for uh, 40 years with 50 different women. Now in the 13th century, when Claire and Francis were here, all these buildings were not here. There was really just the church itself, and then behind it there was an L-shaped building. Uh, historians tell us that most likely uh, pilgrims stayed here on their way to or from Rome. There's a little road down here that went up towards Siena, that direction joined the Via Francigena. But it's perfect for Claire because she wanted to be like Jesus. She wanted to be uh, poor and with the poor people. So you can see behind me the church itself, and you can see the uh, rose window that was added in history. This portico was added in time. There's a little uh, wooden door that was added a few decades after Claire's life, and that commemorates one of the special things that happened here, one of the miracles, if you will, when a Saracen army tried to, uh, tried to get into the, the convent, the cloister, and Claire held up the Eucharist and was able to repel the invaders. But a lot of events happened in Claire's life. Uh, sources tell us Claire served the sisters, she served them in holiness, she served them when they were sick. She wanted her life to be uh, truly an example she, even though she lived a contemplative life, a life of mostly of prayer, she wanted to be connected to the outside world. So she dialogued with people through writing letters. People came to visit her with spiritual direction. Uh, people sent uh, the sick to her. She healed a lot of people. There were lots of miracles where she healed them by making the sign of the cross because she wanted her life to be an example and she wanted her to be, uh, she wanted to be a light. And that's the title of my book, uh, Light from the Cloister. And, you know, we've been my wife and I, Katya, have been organizing pilgrimages here for about 15 years. And I know a lot of people can't come here on pilgrimage for a lot of different reasons, but I really wanted my book to be sort of a journey walking and accompanying St. Clair. So the book is kind of a pilgrimage. I really wanted to bring people here to San Damiano to go inside the cloister, to get inside the life of Clair, inside the stories, and uh, 
to really uh, to walk with Claire and accompany Claire. So I hope you'll be able to check it out. St. Francis or St. Claire of Assisi, Life from the Cloister.